Good morning, Vyasa Tom. Welcome to the program, Super Dawn. I am Vera Osopo with you on this edition. And I am Anthony Osaibovo with you on this edition. Good morning, Vera. Good morning, good morning to, to you. Good morning to our viewers. Uh, good morning to you. Well, this morning, we're going to treat something very, very important to us. And we're looking at our health. We want to look at high blood pressure. This pressure is one of the leading causes of death in Nigeria, especially if you have the, the, the pressure, um, abnormal, the abnormal pressure in your arteries, it will lead to death. And so we want to look at the causes, symptoms, and treatment of high blood pressure. And of course, what we do also is go through the papers. We're going to do that this morning. And in both segments this morning, and also sports, we will open the phone lines for you to call and make your contributions. Don't forget that um, as you watch us, you can also follow us through our YouTube channels. Once again, good morning to you. We'll go on this quick break. And when we come back, We'll be looking through the papers, um, Anthony and Blessed and I. We'll, we'll go through all of the papers this morning, some of it, and um, allow you to make your contributions. Let's go on a break. Super Dawn, your daily live current affairs program where topical issues that border on politics, economy, sport, and sizzling national issues are analyzed. Now hold every Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Super Screen Television. Let your voice be heard. Join us. Welcome back. It's the newspaper review segment and we want to start this morning with the Vanguard. Fresh wolves for APC. And the writer says, ex-PDP members in PDP rights, Buhari, issues seven days ultimatum to address issues. And we have here in the papers this morning, alleged political pogrom against members, Saraki, Dogora, Goji, others involved. The All Progressive Congress APC was yesterday headed towards another major crisis as one of its legacy groups, the New People's Democratic Party in NPDP issued a seven days ultimatum to President Muhammad Buhari to address grievances of marginalization and persecution of its members. Well, this is what is happening again, the crisis rocking the party. I guess it's all politics, it's all politics. The reason why they defect is because they feel that they will be um, benef they will have this benefit from this APC. But the way it sounds, um, they have the APC. I guess they they know who they want to give appointments, office, and the rest. So, um, but I would say it's too bad for the new PDP members that defected. Well, anyway, they have their own well, voice. All, all, all parties have some ten, challenges. Ten, tensions, so, tensions, yes. tensions like this will be high when it's always drawing closer to the elections. We have issues like this in previous times when it's closer to the election. So, but I, I would just say that these people should just fix their houses because if you don't put your house in order, you're giving a strong signal to the other party that, hey, it seems we're not ready for the 2019 election. And if we're not ready for the 2019 election, it is an advantage on your own side. But so, looking at it like, you know, reasonably, you just defected from one party to another. Do you really think you will be given that much attention, knowing fully well you just joined? Okay, I mean, some of these leaders just don't just, they, they, they didn't just defect. 
some of them has been there for some time yeah. and before they give you some leadership position you'll be in that party for yeah. some time but they moved away from the previous party mm -hmm. and that's the former administrative parties you know the pdp and they went into apc mm -hmm. right now looking at these issues i know there will be here and there yeah. it happens in in parties anyway yeah. let's move ahead we have this one Nigerians SS oil revenue rises to 22.4 billion daily and we also have this is part of what we might well treat in today looking at the health sector uh, but we're not looking at it we're looking at particular um, health issues and this says states local government health workers to join strike well I, I don't like things like this when it comes to the health one's sector, health, health uh, you know but let me just take this Nigerians seeking medical treatment in any of the federal, state, and local government owned hospitals may go elsewhere as the Joint Health Sector Union yesterday directed its members in the state and local government areas to join the ongoing health workers' strike by midnight. That was yesterday's midnight yeah. into this morning, morning, early hours of this morning. The strike has started. And that's too bad for the the country, the state of the nation, I would say that health is something you should not play with. You yes. know, you cannot, um, you cannot overemphasize on it. We even when everyone is on holidays, I mean, the public is on holidays. We have public holidays. The health workers, they are always still working because health is life. And I feel that the government, whatever they are clamoring for, should be met so they can go back to work. Uh, when, when, you thought, when you talk about health, what comes to mind to meet human lives? And then if you're not giving the health workers all the benefits they need to function well in our, in our various um, hospitals, you, we are talking about human lives being put at a risk here. Uh, if you look at all the other countries, they, they place premium on health workers. So I strongly believe that if, this country, if our governments are really serious about um, the, the lives of the citizens, let them do something about um, the welfare the of these workers. people so that they can get back to work and more patients who are um, lying down in the who hospital. Dependent. Who dependent. Yeah. Who, who are dependent on them. On government hospital because they cannot afford um, the high cost of private hospitals. Yes, yes. Um, they can get better treatment. Exactly. Let's just take this one. IPOB decries killings, cowardice by a political class. And we have why we expanded Lagos Ibad on expressway, Lai Mohammed. Don't, don't go too far. Military one Tarabat communities. And we have here also APC delegates kicks against option A4 in the rescheduled poll. From the punch. All right, I'm starting with the punch this morning. And on the punch newspaper this morning, we have refusal to honor invitations. And it says, the writer says, Miss Reactions as Senate says IG unfit for public office. Page 7 on the Guardian, um, sorry, the Punch newspaper this morning. And still on the Punch newspaper this morning, Bombers died as worshippers forged attack on Bruno Mosque. Earth workers in state, LGAs to join strike. We talked about that this morning, and um, like we all said, it's really a worrisome issue. It is indeed worrisome. Worrisome. Yes. Why um, all earth workers at every um, um, structure of the government are joining this strike. It's really, really worrisome. Again, Senate postponed passage of 2018 budget, and that's on page 21 of the Punch newspaper. But before I go further, let me quickly take the story. The misreaction as Senate says IG on feet for public office. There were indications on Wednesday that the National Assembly has decided to suspend the 2018 budget of Nigeria police force to penalize the Inspector General of Police, Mr. Ibrahim Idris, over his refusal to honor invitation by the Senate. Findings shows that the fresh summon issued to Idris earlier on Tuesday by the Senate was the last chance he had to appear before the legislature <coughs> or he would risk the suspension of the police budget. Now, with the few stories I've taken now, this is the third time the IGP the third is time? The, yeah, this is the third time the IGP is refusing to meet with the Senate. And the question here is, why is it not yielding to their invitation? Is there something is hiding? Okay, I, I think at this point, uh, we've not heard from the IG. The first and the second time they invited him, he spoke. Um, so as journalists, we're just going to wait until we hear from him. The why 
we don't know yet but i do not think um this is showing uh, a good relationship between the id and the senate he might have um perceived quarrel or perceived high-headedness and with the suspension of, of um, the police budget do you think it's a welcome development do you think that will bring him make him one of his serious before appearing because this I, I don't know but everybody things. should do their own job so we're just waiting to see but the, the, the way things are right now it's perceived that things are not well in that mm. angle and I think they need to sit down and address it most so. states can survive without federal allocation and that's coming from our vice president professor Yemi Oshibanjo you find that story on page 21 of the daily oh, beg your pardon the punch newspaper AKT, INEC says parties may 15 deadline to submit candidates' name. Page 43 of the punch as the story. Ebola outbreak, FG order surveillance at nation's brother. Um, I, I want us to quickly look at this. Uh, we have experienced this Ebola issue before now. And then just some days back in the news, the, this same scourge has already resurfaced again in, um, I think, um, this country was okay Rwanda yeah Rwanda this coach has also um, resurfaced in Rwanda and I'm wondering if this um, this this um, um, disease is not really it's not going though there's no cure to it yet but I'm still wondering why it's just resurfacing again and again the Ebola disease okay um, this Ebola we fought it I remember the then ex-minister in Niger for you know for health he fought it um, I remember also state also came into it the sensitization of this um, thing ebola was on the high rate mm -hmm. i think um, we shouldn't just go to sleep yeah we should watch our environment um, wash sense, wash your hands um, you go to an after the day's work after the work you know once the work is done you can wash your hands go to people you sanitizer. But it really, will help. it's a very good improvement in Nigeria. I didn't think, I would not think that Ebola would have been driven out of Nigeria at that time, knowing um, the the medium of transmission through sweat, uh, breath, and everything. How fast it could actually move from one place to the other. I would give kudos to the Ni to Nigeria because mm. we fought this. We t we we stood we stood by it, you know, before. No, who wants to into, die anyway? It was too Nigerians fast. It was too fast. To have fun. It was just to love leave. life. So yeah, they, you want to leave, you must do the necessary Wash things. Your hands and be yes. Clean. Okay. On the daily trust here, we have uh, most of the stories we have on the front page the stories that we've taken well i'll just take some headlines here it says fresh crisis in apcs npdp faction issues ultimatum lawyer accuses accused of hacking husband remanded in prison health workers strike spreads to states and lgs we have here senate igp on feet to hold public office and oil prices rise as trump dumps a run nuclear deal i'll take the story here he says no tuition fees in federal universities. This is coming from the federal government. The Federal Executive Council yesterday said it is illegal for any federal university in the country to charge tuition fees. The Minister of State for Education, Professor Anthony Onka, stated this while briefing State House correspondents after the cabinet meeting presided by Vice President Yemi Osibanjo. The minister said the council discussed the school fees being charged by various universities and noted that as law as of law no federal university should charge tuition fees i kind of feel that most federal universities are guilty of this i mean we are not by law it was stated out there we are not supposed to pay school fees when you get into a federal university as long as i remember we've been always paying school fees especially well, if, you're, if you went to a federal school out there, even a state school, but we're talking about federal schools here, you would know, you can attest to the fact that, yes, you paid school fees. And now here they're saying, if any school is found wanting, they will be prosecuted. Why hasn't any school been prosecuted? That's if I, one question. If, if I'm going to um, answer that question, I, I want to look at it from two perspectives here. First and foremost is, um, the federal government is saying no federal institution and tertiary institution are to pay tuition fee. If they are not to pay tuition fee, what has the federal government put in place to ensure that this 
institution can be funded fully by government without having any IPCOPs or issues. You, the, the three of us here have been uh, benefited one way or the other from federal universities. We attend Definitely. federal universities and Definitely. we know what, what, what's available there. The, the, the standard of living there are hostels, um, lectures, lectures, theatres and the likes. So if they're not going to be collecting tuition fee, fine, it's a welcome development, but what are they putting in place to ensure that federal institutions are well funded? And secondly, I feel collecting tuition fees another way um, this institution are generating revenue internally. So if you say okay the fee should not be high, fine, I I, I said that would be that would be a good one. But if you're saying they should not collect tuition fee at all, how do they generate revenue? How do they sustain okay. themselves? How do they advocating that they should actually charge? They should, we should they should collect it. Anthony, Anthony, it is okay. Fees. It is okay if education in Nigeria is one hundred percent free. free yeah. But the question here is: Are the federal government capable of funding this institution? I think they are the capable. Question. No, no, okay, I think they are um, capable. But are they actually doing what they are supposed to be doing? That should be the question. Okay, um, looking at the our Nigerian um, educational sector, we must extract our sector very well. Um, if government is saying you're not supposed to pay tuition fee, what um, are they doing to, to um, help in the implementation of their laws? Mm. Because there are things that have to be in place for you to say do not pay. And if we're not paying, why are we paying mm. when we also know that the federal government has said do not pay? Mm. So there are irregularities in this sector. I think this sector needs a lot of funding yeah. and Definitely. the federal government should look at first Definitely. funding the educational sector, sector in Nigeria. Yes, certainly. Um, it's very key. Yes. Okay, he says here, Boko Haram weakened, not defeated. This is from the United Nations. The Boko Haram insurgents have been weakened but not defeated. United States Special Representative of the Secretary General for West Africa and the Sahel, Dr. Mohammed IBN Chambers, he has said. Chambers said this in an interview with newsmen in Meduguri on the sideline of the two-day Lake Chad Governors Forum for Regional Cooperation on Stabilization, Peace Building and Sustainable Development. Boko Haram, Boko Haram is by no means defeated, but certainly weakened. The fight needs to continue, he said. Okay. Well, if they are actually this, if they have been weakened, then how come we still having all these attacks, suspected Boko Haram attacks? One way or the other, we want to believe that yes, the, the, the Boko Haram, though I'm not, I'm not, I'm trying not to be biased here, I'm just giving my own personal opinion, mm -hmm. that truly they have been weakened to some extent. But if, if, if you watch the attacks that have been happening now, it can, you, you'll find out that the level of attack has happening now has reduced as when they were still active in their operations. By that, I mean you, every now and then you're hearing of bombing here, bombing here, and bombing here. Now, what they are using now, the strategy they are using now is suicide bombers now. And which means and that if, if we get more intelligence reports on security matters, this issue of suicide bombing will, one way or the other, reduce drastically. Well, I really want an explanation. I really don't know if the suicide bombers or the Boko Haram people, if they're the same set of people, people yeah. that are killing in the northern part and some parts of the country we call the headsmen. Yes, you know, I, I really want to, I think in my mind, that this might just be the same set of people it's that is tactics. tormenting, you know, harassing and killing innocent lives. If we say the activities have reduced drastically, I don't know, but I know killings are still going on. Every day. I remember the last one Every in Kaduna. Day. I just want uh, security agencies to, to just look at all of these things and make sure these killings end. And that's true. Okay, I'll take the last headline that says, FEC approves 1.4 billion Naira for airport equipment. The Federal Executive Council yesterday approved 1.3 billion Naira for the procurement of new equipment for control towers at six airports. The benefiting airports are those in Meduguri, Kaduna, Iloring, Benin, and Ibadan. The Minister of State for Aviation, Senator Hadi Siraka, Sirika, stated this while addressing State House correspondents after the Cabinet meeting. I think that's a good one. 
uh, for six states, 1.4 billion. This is a very large amount of money, and I think it will be visible if this is done, if this is implemented. I mean, there is no need to want to nose into the issue, nose into the spending. If it's done, it's done, and I applaud the federal government for this. Okay, we'll go on this break, and when we come back, we still have um, the nation newspaper stories. Stay with us. Welcome back. We'll still continue with the newspaper review, but we have the last paper this morning, and that's the Nation newspaper. This says Forbes rates Dangote is among world's top 75. Yeah, world oh, top. One. That's a good one. All straight from Nigeria, yeah. Africa. Africa. We're representing the world. We're actually so representing, it's, and it's, um, it's, it's, a good one. it's a good one if you ask me, and I, I am so proud of him. He has been at the forefront of development in both the nation and the continent of Africa as a whole. And for him to be recognized in the world, it shows that um, we are making wave and also um, Nigerian and Africa as a whole is now gaining, gaining a voice. At least we are hearing that Nigerians are doing great Good things. things. Yeah. Yeah. Good things. And we need to promote our person. Certainly. We also have in the papers this morning, ex-PDP leaders in APC give seven days deadline for talks. And the writer says, letter is sign of 2019 battle. Um, we took that in some of the papers this morning. It's making rounds in the newspapers this morning. We have this one, APC. Leaders OK delegates Congress. Leaders of the All Progressive Congress, APC, in the Southwest have dropped the direct primary plan to pick 
the party's candidate for July 24th, Ekiti State Governorship election. Majority of the aspirants at the stakeholders' meeting on Tuesday voted the red primary, a process through which all card carry members of the party in the 177 wards will have the opportunity of voting in the primaries. All party card members will now have the opportunity to vote. Yeah, it's it, 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 it's a good one if you ask me. And also, I still don't want. I, I'm still wondering why ex PDP leaders in APC will have to come up with um, that that warning. If the party is not okay for you and you feel you, you you want to go back to where you're coming from, fine. You, you, you just can. feel because carpeting is just it. <laughs> that, you want them to just keep moving, moving, moving but, without but, but, without but direction. At the end of the day, it's all democracy. It's all freedom of speech, freedom of expression. You have every right to demand, and they did their thing. And so it's just left for the APC members to either succumb to what they want or not. Not APC member, ex, 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 PDP, um, ex PDP, PDP members. members so, okay, APC, APC members. APC, okay. That's what I'm saying. Okay, we also have this one. Oil price rise brightens hope for the economy. I do not think this should raise any hope yet. I think even in the oil price, we should look at other sectors that can generate money for the country. Yeah, diversification yes. of the economy. Yes. Yeah. The health sector education even the entertainment industry that many people are not even looking into well, well i think so nigerians uh, now know that that, that, that place Trust they are me. looking that way the, but the government is the governments are not doing anything yet well that's, now. that's the thing with entertainment the entertainment the creative industry they grew on their own without the government having to uh the allocate funds there but you and know kudos to the entertainment industry. well you know the industry will go far if the government come into it, because there are other policies. But that I, need to I put think in place. governments too are into entertainment. Yes. Um, sometimes they yes. sponsor you use them for events um, and do all, all of those things. But it's just for us to pull more um, into it. It's just for us to look further more and do more things. Well, in the papers we have corruption. TI rating on Nigeria faulty, says Mago. And the writer says EFCC to monitor NDDC contractors. The acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Mr. Ibrahim Magu, yesterday faulted the corruption index on Nigeria by Transparency International. He said politics was already scripting into the indices being used by the international body. He's feeling that um, politics is creeping in, and so they are not telling us the right thing. But so it's usual. I feel that politics is being involved in about everything in Nigeria. So it's kind of like the survival of the fittest. Okay, That's survival it. of the fittest. What do you Politics feel? Politics is now is into everything that we do in Nigeria. Like you say, it's not the order of the day now. You're not doing anything without uh, politicizing it now. Mm. So um, let's just hope that um, the reports, they look into it very well, they investigate it very well and see what can be done to ensure that whatever accusation is on that report can be nipped in the board. Okay, well, we'll, look, we'll see through that. But I think... Um, why is it coming now that politics is creeping in? Um, Transparency International has been talking about lots of things that we're not doing right, yeah. and they have been bringing it to the forefront. And so if they are telling you that this is it right now, why do you think they are not saying the right thing? That's my opinion. Well, we'll go on this break. When we come back, we want to look at blood pressure. Let's go on a break.
Welcome back. We want to look at high blood pressure um, causes, symptoms, probably treatment or what you could call um, prevention, really. Um, we're going to look at it because we know that this, at the end of the day, if it's not taken care of, causes heart disease. Well, we have a doctor that will go through this with us this morning and is Dr. Ime Abraham. Good morning to you. Good morning, Marion. Thank you. Good morning to you, Doctor. Good morning. Thank you. Dr. Ome, looking at um, first, I, w I, w I want to say thank you for coming. Thank you. Yes. And um, this is the first time we're having you here. What is blood pressure? Okay. Blood pressure can simply be defined in relation to the arteries. Like we have normal blood pressure, we have low blood pressure, we have high blood pressure. So we have to define it in relative to the arteries. Now, if the arteries contract, there's a particular pressure, and if they relax, there's a particular pressure for it. So blood pressure is just the pressure of the arteries when blood flows in and out of the arteries. That's blood pressure, simply. When blood flows to the heart and comes through the arteries, the blood pressure going and coming out from the arteries, that's pressure. Okay, you said something about uh, blood pressure is related to the blood flow of yeah. the arteries, which means there are different types of blood pressure. Would you differentiate and just... Okay, we have normal that? body pressure, then we have high pressure. Those are basically two pressures we have for the body. Normal body pressure, then high pressure. So okay, when you say normal, normal body pressure, yeah. what do you mean? Which one is normal? What makes the pressure normal? Okay, like we know measurements are always taken to ascertain when something is, when a particular measurement is normal, or a particular uh, tissue or organ is normal, when it's above or when it's below. Like for measurement of blood pressure, for example, um, the normal measurement taken is 120 over 80. Now that fraction, we call the uppermost part the systolic, and the lower, the denominator, the diastolic. Now the systolic is the pressure when the heart contracts. You mean that was that one is the systolic. Then the diastolic, which is the 80 under, is when the uh, arteries relaxes. Okay, okay, so that definition is leading us to what are the causes of this? Okay, like what could cause it? Blood pressure, or let's say high blood pressure, for example. Yes, high blood, high pressure. blood pressure. It's always the secondary cause. It doesn't occur on its own. It occurs with relative to a particular condition. Like for example, when you have when a patient has kidney. When a patient has kidney issues, for example, now the kidney tends to secrete more hormones. Now that hormones can lead to blood pressure. Another thing that can lead to blood pressure is when a, an individual is overstressed or when he starts thinking, the pressure tends to come up. Then taking of excessive alcohol too can lead to pressure coming up. Then we know we take coffee and coffee contains caffeine. Now that caffeine can also lead to increase in blood pressure. So, you, so you're what? saying if you take excessive alcohol, it's not good for the body? It's not good for the body. Alcohol is not good for the body. Okay, excessive alcohol. Yes, excessive I mean, alcohol. Could someone drink red wine? You know? Yes, red wine can actually reduce blood pressure. Okay, so what if I have high blood pressure, what are the symptoms that uh, I would need to watch out for? To okay, know that I have? high pressure normally don't come with any symptoms. Wow. That's why we always advise if you go to a hospital or once in a while you have regular checkup. Regular checkup will enable the physicians to determine and, and maybe keep it an history of your findings. If you don't go to the hospital, for example, or don't measure your blood pressure, you will know your blood pressure is high. Okay, what are the indicators? What are the things that I will know that hey, it's coming high a bit, it's, it's, okay. it's increasing a bit. Before we what are these things? Let's know what high pressure, high blood pressure is all yes. about first. That okay. would be better. Now, high blood pressure is, before we can call it hypertension or high blood pressure, it's when a particular pressure is sustained over a period of time. What period of time? Like, if, for example, we, I, let, me see, let me use myself as an example now. I go to a clinic, I measure my blood pressure, and it's 140. As at today, it doesn't mean my, just because it's high today doesn't mean it will be high tomorrow. But if after like two, three, four, five measurements, it's still 140, then it means I'm tending to becoming a hypertensive in nature. Okay, okay. Um, please, for uh, clarity's sake, okay. there have been instances where people mix high blood pressure and hypertension. Could you define the both and differentiate the both if they are different? High blood pressure is simply when the pressure is high. Okay. 
Hypertension is when your pressure is high over a period of time. Okay. That's when it becomes hypertension. It's not hypertension just because it's high. So it's not yet high power. Yes, when it's high. You can be stressed and you just so went when to you the have clinic about four and days, five days, it's hypertension. No, when it's high today after you take it to this measure, maybe you take it to this measurement this week uh, and it's one for this high this week. And you go to the same week, clinic, it's still high. still high. And you take it over like two, three, four, five times, it's still high. It means you are attending, you are becoming hypertensive already. Okay, I asked you um, before we continued, I said, what were the symptoms? What will you know as a person that is getting high? What are the things that my bodies will begin to tell me is getting high? Maybe I'm driving and it's high. Will I know that it's high? You can are there signals tell. the body will give to it me? It never give you any signal. That's, that's why it's dangerous. It doesn't come with any sign or signal. Except you go, like, let me use my father as an example. Sorry to use that. There was a day we, we, we just, I was, I think I was the one who was sick, so we went to the hospital and what happened was that normally when you get to the hospital, what they do first when you go, they check your blood pressure. And luckily for him, he just went to the desk and checked his blood pressure and his blood pressure was still under it as at that particular time, so he has to be admitted. If he didn't check, there was no way, because we drove from house to the clinic, so there was no way he's going to know if his, that pressure was high or not. Because it was looking normal, healthy, and okay, okay. Okay, let's move from high blood pressure to hypertension. How do okay. you know someone is hypertensive? What are the symptoms? Are there fatigue or um, uh, red eye or something? Like, you sh there should okay, be something. If we, if Physically. If we relate it to the eye, for example, now, there might be red eye. Still, there might not be any symptoms. Now, if we tend to relate hypertension now to the eye, there's a condition that hypertension leads to what we should call glaucoma, for example. Okay. Now, glaucoma, why there's a definition for it, we always tell patient. We call it the silent thief of sight. Why? Because it occurs without your knowledge. You can only see it, or a physician can only tell when you go for eye sure. examination. Okay, okay. Now, some, of, some symptoms of glaucoma can come, like the acute close angle glaucoma, for example, can occur with pains and redness, and so, but some but the one we call primary angle, uh, open angle glaucoma does not come with any sign or symptoms. If you don't check, you just discover your vision is going until you check, you don't know. Okay, um, we'll go on the screen break and when we come back, we need to know more. We're, we're not looking at hypertension this morning. We're looking at high blood, blood pressure. pressure. Okay. So I want us to just look at the high blood pressure, look at how people will understand what high blood pressure is, how they will understand when it starts coming before it gets to our potential. Okay. We'll go on this
we're looking at um, high blood pressure. Um, this disease leads to heart disease. How does that happen? Okay. Um, like you say, we are dealing with high blood pressure. Now let's just go back to a little basic so that mm. we can actually relate it to how it leads to heart okay, disease. Okay, go ahead. So, like the measurement we take, we they have a range. 120, 80, we assume it's normal within that range. If it's 129, 130, 80, it's moderately high. If it's 140 and above, that's when it's actually high blood pressure. Now, high blood pressure can lead to one basic disease, hypertension. Okay. That's what it leads to. Over a, when it's high okay. over a period of time, that's when it leads to hypertension. When it's just high, it's high. So the one basic disease it can lead to actually is hypertension. Okay, okay. and what are the impl implications? Okay. Once it's hypertension already, mm. it can lead to other, it can be secondary to other body disease. Okay, now, when you are hypertensive... Like, like what are the places that it can actually affect? You could it affect the eyes, the mouth, the hands? Where could it actually affect yeah. yes, it can, the body? It will definitely affect the eyes. To definitely affect the eyes when it's not controlled and if it's not controlled we lead to leaky blood what we call leaky blood vessels it means the blood, blood vessels the rupture and blood recombinant from the vessels okay That's okay so um as regards the heart i want to retreat what she said what michael was asked how does it happen when you have high blood pressure and so all of a sudden you're having heart failure what's what happens between that high blood pressure and heart failure high blood pressure really does not lead to heart failure really heart failure is different heart disease maybe okay. you wanted to say heart disease mm, heart uh, because... disease is broad okay there are different diseases that mm. affect the heart you have cardiac arrest can it lead to all of those no, things? No, it cannot lead to okay. uh, high blood pressure. It cannot easily lead to cardiac arrest. But it leads to hypertension. Yes, and cardiac it can arrest. lead to hypertension first when it's not managed. Well, well when the blood pressure isn't managed. Managed. Okay. That's when it becomes. We okay. Need what, to add what, disease. what are the food that we understand? What we take in most times, okay. um, it goes to the blood. So is, are there sort of kind of foods that we take that? increases your high blood pressure uh, when we started i mentioned caffeine for example okay, caffeine. you take coffee no. caffeine is a component of coffee coffee tends to increase high blood pressure no there are people well like, sorry to interrupt you you can treat us us right now and so you'll be part of this program yes like i was saying uh, there are people like my father who doesn't eat who doesn't drink alcohol doesn't, doesn't drink coffee doesn't take coke doesn't take all of these things you know, but once in a while, that high blood pressure still comes in. Like, what, what are kind of food, like solid food that we eat that could... Okay. Basically, the food we eat, apart from those ones I've mentioned, doesn't really lead to you having high blood pressure. Okay. The food we eat, yes. apart from those ones I've mentioned, those caffeine, alcohol, does not lead you to having high okay, blood but, pressure. Okay, but if the food doesn't lead to that, once you have, or the doctor has diagnosed you for having high blood pressure okay. are there food uh, nutrients Substances. are there things you need to take that will not make it lead to high blood um, to hypertension okay once you are diagnosed of high blood pressure yes. for example, the first reset the doctors give you is to change your lifestyle okay now you tell them the kind of lifestyle you have been living if you are an alcoholic you let them know if you take caffeine you let them know so by the time you tell them your history they adjust your lifestyle. If you need to do exercise, you have been told you have to do exercises. To if you like people that are obese, for example, obesity can lead to high blood pressure. Okay. Because when someone is obese, for example, this the way the, the, the there's a thinning of the arteries already, so blood flow going is already altered already. So obese, that is people that are fat, or let me just use that word fat. Okay, yes, speaking of fat, doesn't fat and oil somehow um, circulate around the blood vessels and causes high blood pressure? If fat enters into the arteries, cholesterol, the cholesterol, and it will lead to high blood pressure over time. Okay, you said people that are obese yes, um, might likely um, have, have high, blood pressure. high blood pressure. Are you saying that? Slim people would not have it. Yes, that's why it has different. It. it has different causes now. 
obesity, obesity now is a cause. Now, it depends on the slim person, for example. Is he an alcoholic? Uh, does he, uh, is he able to manage stress and anxiety? So those various uh, different causes can lead. Is he having kidney disease? Is he diabetic? It doesn't mean because you are slim. You are not, before we think people who are fat, they always tend to diabetes, for example. Now it's not so. You see people that are slim having diabetic. Why? Because a lot of intakes of sugar in the foods we eat, not uh, necessarily artificial sugar. If all the food we eat contains sugar, rice contains sugar, garlic contains sugar, excess of them will lead to increase the sugar of the body. And if it's not controlled, it tends to lead to diabetes. So okay. this is leading us to prevention right now. So okay. you're telling us how we can prevent high, high blood, blood pressure. pressure. Yes. So if, a, if you can balance your lifestyle, uh, manage what you take, control the kind of food you take, definitely, and if you can exercise very well, then you should be able to avoid that. Okay, how often should I check my high blood pressure? You can check. My blood pressure, rather. You can check once in a month. It doesn't cost you anything to walk into any general hospital or health center to check your blood pressure and go. Okay. Do, but I want to ask, do people usually go for treatment in this country? Yes. Do we have, um, <laughs> do people usually just walk in to say, just check my pressure? Mm, well, let's say it depends on awareness level, number one. but in this country we know if something is not happening to you, for example, you, you, will not, you will not see the need to check. You will not see the need to check and see something has come up and then you want to manage. Because in this country, we, we don't we, believe... We hardly go for checkups. <laughs> and we hardly go for checkups. We don't believe in preventive medicine. We believe in curative and managing. And that's where the problem is actually is. If not, if you, if you can detect... We always believe prevention is better than cure. Early detection is always better. Always better. If it's detected early, you can often go down and before you know it will not be there. Because there must be a spike first. It must start from maybe it's 140 today, it's 130 tomorrow. It's 140, it's 130, it's coming up and there must be a spike first. And something must be leading to that spike. Okay. So if what is causing that spike is not managed or diagnosed in time, then it tends to... So there are actually drugs that could manage... Yes, there are so, lots so of drugs. So one can treat it, treatment? Yes. No, it can be managed. It can be managed, it cannot be treated. No, it cannot be managed. Oh my God, I thought it can be treated. No, it cannot be treated. So if you have it, if one ha if you have it, you have you, it for you life. Keep, you have it for life. You keep yeah, taking managing, the medication. Yes, how managing. often do they take this medication? Depends on the physician prescription and depends on how high the blood pressure is too. Okay. Um, take for instance a twin. Okay. Eat same amount of food, same amount of exercise, same everything, you know. But this person, from the way uh, when they check their blood pressure, this one has more, uh, has a higher blood pressure than the other. What? would have caused that instance. Okay. You say a twin, for example, right? Yes. Their genetic makeup might be different. Okay. She understand. Because sometimes these diseases are hereditary. Now, both of them, their genetic makeup might be different. So maybe one is predisposed, the other is not, even if they take the same amount of everything and they do everything together. Since their makeup is different, then they can't have the same condition. So you can have different conditions. Yes. Um, might not have the same, same. condition. And it doesn't mean because they are twins. They are identical twins also. Yeah, I just wanted to use that. Um, okay. Well, uh, finally, before we look, what, what do you think we need to know about high blood pressure? You started educating us on that. Um, but I need you to tell the, um, just to summarize what we've been discussing t since and let the audience know that, hey, this is what high blood pressure is. It can be prevented. It cannot be treated or cured. Um, but, and what the lifestyle we need to live. Okay. So, high blood pressure, like we have already established, is when the, there's a spike in the blood, in the pressure of the blood, basically 140 and above, millimeter mercury and above. So the best way to deal with it is to have a regular checkup. Once you have a regular checkup, you know your blood pressure, you know how to manage it. Avoid things that will lead to you having high blood pressure, like taking of excessive alcohol, coffee, or, Foods that, for example, cholesterol. For example, we know we have uh, fatty. some fatty food that have cholesterol. Others have low cholesterol. Others have no cholesterol. So excess of all these elements in the body will actually spike up high blood pressure. And if they are not controlled, 
it will lead to hypertension. But if they are controlled, it doesn't lead to hypertension. Okay, we want to thank you for coming. And you're saying, you've said that we should go for checkups. Yeah. <laughs> Nigeria has just continued. We are strong and we continue just moving on and working without really checking our health condition. Thank you so much, you, Dr. Ume Abraham Autometrics. Thank you so much for coming thank on you. this thank segment. You, thank you, Dr. Well, this is where we can go. You need to check up your blood pressure. Well, it's the sports segment time. We will go on the break, on the break right now. Sports segment will continue.